That's what this motion is all about that we're going to look at now is the notice. The motion is effectively the notice to the defense counsel. Uh, and they have to do it in writing uh, before the trial, which is what this motion is. Uh, let's see. I think that's all I needed to talk about in terms of the motion. So now let's jump into the, the motion itself. Is there a hearing? Oh, I think there is a hearing tomorrow, isn't there? On some of the, uh, let me see if I put it into my calendar. Yes, the immunity, the uh, the immunity, the use immunity being offered to um, uh, Hannah Gutierrez to testify in the Alec Baldwin trial. That the hearing, so the state wants to offer Hannah Gutierrez use immunity. Uh, that means anything she says under the umbrella of this use immunity could not be used against her. Uh, say uh, in her appeal or if she wins a new trial could not be used against her in her new trial um the the catch for hannah Gutierrez being that sounds great for hannah Gutierrez, right can't be used against her the catch is it also removes from her her privilege to claim a fifth amendment right to not testify to not answer those questions because the fifth amendment privilege against self-incrimination is a privilege against self-incrimination if the if the evidence that you're speaking to cannot be used against you, it's not effectively incriminatory anymore. So the the parties are arguing about whether or not Hannah Gutierrez can be compelled to testify, even though she has notified the state that she intends to claim the Fifth Amendment. We'll be live streaming that immunity hearing tomorrow. I'm glad you reminded me. I'd actually forgotten that would have been awkward. Okay, <clears throat> so. Uh, let me expand this more so it's easier for all of us to read. So comes now the state of New Mexico by special prosecutors, Carrie Morrissey or Linda Johnson submit the following notice of intent to introduce evidence of crimes, wrongs, or acts as intrinsic evidence or in the alternative to rule 11404B of the New Mexico NMRA. New Mexico rules of evidence annotated is probably what that stands for. New Mexico rules annotated. The state submits the following. Uh, sometime prior to October 2021, the defendant, Alec Baldwin, collaborated with Joel Souza, in, the director in the writing and production of screenplay Rust, eventually began filming in New Mexico on October 6th. The defendant was one of the film's producers. According to the evidence, the defendant arrived in Santa Fe, New Mexico, sometime before October 12th to begin acting as the leading actor in the film. Prior to the filming, the defendant had asked to be assigned the biggest gun available. He was assigned an 1873 replica revolver manufactured sometime in 2017 by Pieta Firearms, a, uh, a maker of these Western-style guns in the modern era. Between October 12th and October 21st, the defendant was involved in various scenes wherein the defendant, one, used his gun as a pointer directing crew members, two, discharged the revolver after the filming was over and cut was called in violation of rules governing the safe handling of firearms on set, three, the defendant shot several scenes wherein he placed his finger on the trigger of the revolver where the scene did not require any shooting of the firearm, four, rushed the armor to reload and crew members to work at a faster pace, five, was inattentive during the firearms training conducted by Ms. Gutierrez, the armorer, and was distracted by texting, FaceTiming family members and making videos for his family's enjoyment. The evidence to support this is witness testimony in the video evidence in the last bulleted paragraph below. And six, engaged in horseplay with the revolver while making videos during his firearms training while using pull. That should probably mean full load blanks. Seven, displayed erratic and aggressive behavior during the filming of Rust to create a potential safety concerns. Eight, displayed reckless behavior as it relates to the use of a firearm, such as pointing it and firing a blank round at a crew member, while that crew member, as, as a line should probably read, was in line of sight as his perceived target. And nine, after October 21st, was insistent that he not be required to follow safety re recommendations made by film set safety experts on the continuation of the filming of Rust in Montana. Oh my gosh, this is new evidence that would not have been in the uh, Hannah Gutierrez trial. So here the state is saying, hey, even after he shot and killed Helena Hutchins, we argue recklessly in voluntary manslaughter, even after he killed her, he still would not abide 
by safety rules. When the when the um, filming of Rust continued at a different location in Montana. So all of these, the state's going to go into more details on this bulleted list, uh, this numeric list. Um, but all of these have to do with recklessness, right? Unsafe handling of a firearm. And unsafe handling of a firearm is not going to be merely negligent conduct, which would only be enough for civil liability. Because firearms are inherently dangerous instruments, we all know this, firearms handled unsafely kill and maim. Uh, because they're inherently unsafe instruments, the improper handling of them so as to create an unjustified risk of death or maiming is more than negligence. It's recklessness carries criminal liability. So, of course, the crime with which Baldwin is charged is reckless manslaughter. And all of these are other prior bad acts consistent with reckless conduct. Not generalized reckless conduct, not reckless conduct without some connection to the events here, but reckless conduct in the sense of guns in particular, which fits in with 404B2, right? As proving motive, an exception to the exclusion for other prior bad acts evidence, proving motive, opportunity, intent, preparation, plan, knowledge, identity, absence, mistake, or lack of accident. They're not saying here, the state's not saying, hey, you know, he has a drunk driving conviction. I, I'm not saying Alec Baldwin has a drunk driving conviction. I, I would have no idea. But for for discussion purposes, the state's not saying, hey, he has a drunk driving condition. Drunk driving is recklessness. So that should be admitted as evidence of general recklessness on the part of Alec Baldwin. No, no, no. Here they're saying this that would be an extrinsic evidence of recklessness, meaning evidence of recklessness not directly tied to the alleged crime here the mishandling of a gun. This is intrinsic reckless conduct that's closely proximate to what we're claiming he did here, the unsafe handling of a gun. So more details on each of those numbered prior bad acts. On October 21st, minutes before the 911 call was made reporting the shooting of Ms. Mr. Souza, who was also struck by the bullet but survived the bullet after it passed completely through Helena Hutchins' body, mortally wounding her. A minutes before the 911 call was made reporting the shooting of Mr. Souza and Ms. Hutchins, Mr. Baldwin is photographed by Karen Kuhn manipulating his prop gun. Karen Kuhn was kind of the on-set photographer to, to document the production of the movie. She testified in the Gutierrez trial. He appears to have his finger inside the trigger guard and his thumb on the hammer, both actions necessary for the gun to discharge. Upon information and belief, Ms. Gutierrez was not present to supervise his handling of the gun. On October 21st, 2021, prior to lunch, Mamie Mitchell, who is the script supervisor, uh, I believe she called 911, was one of the people to call 911 took a cell phone video of Mr. Baldwin wherein he appears to cock the gun and possibly pull the trigger. In video number blah, blah, blah on October 21st, prior to lunch, there is a set video wherein Mr. Baldwin is asked to look at the camera and pull his gun and point his gun in the direction of camera left. Mr. Baldwin is not instructed to cock the gun, but he cocks the gun despite not being asked to cock the gun. There is some evidence that he also pulls the trigger. In another video, Mr. Baldwin can be seen exercising complete control over the crew and screaming at the crew to be quiet. Now, all these videos have a, a complex numeric, alphanumeric designation here. I'm obviously not going to read that. They're, the prosecution is being so specific because these are specific clips they intend to introduce as exhibits, as evidence in the trial. So they're providing the required notice to the defense. <clears throat> 